Okay, this is the last page of our partial derivative lecture. So one thing I need to let you know is make sure you've reviewed the rules for taking derivatives. I'm not going to uh, reteach you those. You need to go look at them, review them, and watch the video of all the different ways you can take derivatives. If you don't, this next part will be hard. And I'm, so I'm giving you a fair warning. So this is the part where we're finding partial derivatives algebraically. And there is a key to making this work. So you have to think of the extra variable extra, if I can spell that right, variable as a constant. That's the key. So in other words, if I'm going to take the partial with respect to x of the function xy, I have to think as y as a constant. And I would say, OK, well, what's the derivative of this? So let's see. Let's put a constant in there. Let's say I have 2x. And how would you take the derivative of that with respect to x? Y, it would just be 2, correct? So if I do the same thing, I think of y as a constant, the partial with respect to x then would just be y. So take a look at that example, and this is how I would do it if I had an actual constant there. And then partial derivative requires me to think of the quote unquote extra variable that doesn't match this variable as a constant. Now, let's do an example here of a solid one. This is our function, 16 minus x squared minus y squared we've been working with. So we're going to find the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and then evaluate each of those at the ordered pair, and mostly kind of so that we can see how good our estimates were. Okay, Because, you know, it's nice to know that the estimates are pretty solid. All right, so let's see. If I want to do f sub x of xy, so this is f of x here. So I have to take, since there some differences of all these terms, I just take the derivative of each term with respect to x, treating y as a constant. So the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of minus x squared is minus 2x. And the derivative of a constant is also 0. So then that derivative turns out to be minus 2x. If I do the same thing for f sub y of xy, I have to think now of x as a constant. So uh, thinking of x as a constant, that means that the derivative of 16 is 0. The derivative of minus x squared, well, that's a constant too. So that's minus 0 or plus 0. And the derivative of y squared is 2y minus 2y. So that's really, that's really how straightforward it is. Um, now, of course, the problems can get pretty nasty, but nevertheless, this is how you look at it. So let's actually calculate f sub x at 1, 3. Well, f sub x at 1, 3, x is 1, so that's minus 2 times 1, <gasps> minus 2. That's pretty darn close to our estimate that we had earlier using a small h. And then if I do f sub y of 1, 3, that gives me uh, minus 2 times, now I need the y value here, 3 minus 6. And again, that is pretty close to what our estimate was. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do one of these. Um, there, You have to actually do two derivatives per, so f sub x, f sub y, and I actually expect you to try these. You, I mean, honestly, if I was to lecture in class, this is the only example I'd give, and then I would tell students to work on these. So this is what I expect you to do. I expect you to try these. I will do one of them first. So I'm going to I'm just going to do number 1 f sub y. All right, so when I look at this term, I see the y variable here and I have to think of x squared as a constant. So I have to think, okay, if I want to take the derivative of 2y, that's going to give me the 2. So my derivative with respect to y of that term is just x squared. The derivative with respect to y here is going to be 2x to the 5th. And then if I do f sub y, or sorry, not f sub y, f sub x, x, y, that's going to be, well, see, now my x is the variable and y is the constant. So this is going to be 
2x times y plus 10x to the fourth times y. Now in part two, you have to use a quotient rule, but these are pretty straightforward pieces. And then here you have to use the product rule and the chain rule twice, okay? And then uh, here you have to take the derivative of the natural log and use the chain rule. So again, I'm begging you, just try these problems, see how far you can get, and we will go over them on Wednesday. And for those of you who are just watching this on YouTube, I'll do them in another um, video later on.